I'm going to show you the best budget laptop on the market today that I could find. And you can even edit 4K video for around 300 bucks on this thing. So if this is something that is interesting to you, then stick around. Introducing the Dell Inspiron 14 3000 series, model 3493. It has a 14 inch HD display with a webcam, an Intel Core i5 1035G4 processor, four gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabyte NVMe SSD, Intel UHD graphics, a wireless AC Bluetooth card, an SD card reader, HDMI and USB 3.1, Waves Max audio, and of course, Windows 10 Home, in S mode. With these specs, is this a budget beast of a machine or just marketing hype using newer, bigger numbers to dazzle consumers with? Since this is packing a 10th gen Intel processor, it's got plenty of power for most everyday tasks for the majority of people out there. I even cut Samsung stock 4K video to exactly one minute long and used that on this budget laptop as well as my main video editing desktop to perform benchmarking tests. And the results really did surprise me for such a cheap laptop performed so well. See the comments below for the links to the original video download to test on your own systems as well. Because it has the latest Intel graphics, which uses QuickSync for encoding videos, it performs very well as long as you're using a program that can handle GPU acceleration, such as Filmora 9 or PowerDirector. For my benchmarks, I used Filmora 9. As you can see, the system packs a punch, especially for the price. Now Dell, of course, had to shave a few corners, reusing pre-existing parts from their parts bins to build this, which shows through the lower quality LCD screen, as well as the touchpad that I absolutely hate but it can easily live with it by buying a external USB mouse. The keys are not backlit, but I'm curious if I can find some simple upgrades to make this a much better laptop, hopefully for less than what a nicer laptop would have costed. Now, if I can, here's what I would upgrade. One, the LCD screen to a full HD display with IPS if possible. Two, the Wi-Fi card, the one that it comes with is okay, but it's not Wi-Fi 6 or anything nice and fancy. Three, an NVMe SSD with a bigger and faster one. And four, a keyboard with a backlight would be nice. Oh yeah, so surprise number five, actually uh, surprisingly, there's also space under the hood to be able to install an additional two and a half inch hard drive or SSD while keeping the NVMe drive installed. So there's no excuse to not have enough space by simply adding another drive in this machine. So here I've got a HTML5 speed test that I loaded up on a VM locally on my network and I'm using the stock Wi-Fi card connected over the five gigahertz radio on my Ubiquiti SHD access point. So here we can see the performance of the stock card is okay. Now you can see the results are decent, but I could definitely step it up a notch by upgrading the Wi-Fi card to something much higher end like this Wi-Fi 6 PCIe Wi-Fi card. So one thing come to find out that I was pleasantly surprised about was that this machine actually comes with an ethernet port. Now in the eBay listing that I purchased it from, it actually did not list that there was an ethernet port on this machine. And even Googling it, I couldn't really find any information on it because I didn't get the full model number until I actually received it in the mail. One thing that's very disappointing is that it is only a fast ethernet connection and not gigabit which means it can only connect and communicate at 10 or 100 megabits per second. This means that the stock Wi-Fi card is actually three times as fast than the built-in Ethernet card. Now, luckily I have a USB 3.2 Ethernet adapter that I just plugged in, it's full gigabit, and I just plug that in whenever I need to transfer any large files, uh, such as videos for video editing. But other than that, really, again, for the price, you can't go wrong. Next, taking a look at the storage, you can see that this stock NVMe drive is actually respectably pretty quick. So with almost uh, 1400 megabytes a second read and just over 800 megabytes per second writes. Now that's fast. A standard SSD that is SATA based can only perform upwards of about 550 to 600 megabytes per second read and write speeds. So you can see that this budget NVMe is still faster than say even like a higher end Samsung or Intel SSD that is a SATA based drive. 
Now that's all for today's show. Now a quick word from our sponsor, which is Windscribe. Windscribe is a VPN provider that provides safe surfing no matter where you are. Now check out Windscribe and be sure to use my affiliate link in which I do get compensated for if you use, by the way. And it'll help stop tracking different things in your browser and just keeping all of your information private. And the pricing starts at $9 a month for month to month, but if you pay for your upfront, it's just a little bit over $4 a month. Now if you're a student, scroll down a bit and go ahead and click on this link here and check this out. You get another 40% off your yearly subscription. You just can't beat this. Personally, I've used Windscribed myself for several years now, and I've never had any problems. I love it when I travel, and it keeps me secure. Testing, testing, one, two, three. <laughs>